Hey everybody, you guys were requesting a video all about Black Panther's abilities. Marvel actually explained how they're going to work in the MCU, so this is going to be a breakdown. There's a Marvel giveaway that's going on right now for those Spider-Man action figures. I need a Black Panther giveaway, so you guys feel free to recommend Black Panther stuff. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. But since Doctor Strange, we've seen some really weird stuff in the Marvel Universe, so you don't have to explain everybody's powers using the technology of Tony Stark the way they're doing with all the Spider-Man homecoming gear in the new suit, even though he's gotten the spider bite, so technically they're metahumans, but they don't use the word mutant, they use the term enhanced, which is a good way to describe Black Panther. But a lot of his physical abilities, super soldier Captain America style, flow from vibranium, interestingly enough. So if you haven't read a lot of the comics, vibranium is the core of Wakanda's economy, their cultural heritage. It's enabled them to be so self-contained and free from outside influence that what you get when you see the beginning of the trailer and he walks into warrior balls here is a look at a society that hasn't been affected by the McWorld effect. And I'll explain some of the technology too because you see some devices on his wrist there's a lot of Wakandan technology that just like Asgardian technology looks very old timey but is actually super advanced. When new Black Panthers take the mantle from the previous king or queen as it may be because Shuri was Black Panther in the comics, they take the art shaped herb and it helps form the bond with the panther god that gives them their powers so it's more mystical in nature in the comics. But what the Marvel movies have done is make it a little more practical. Kevin Feige says, that's partially spiritual, so he says partially, we certainly don't call it magic, but there's vibranium that has been interwoven with that soil in the lands for thousands of years, so there's all these other things going on with it. So, there's a spiritual aspect to his powers as well as a biological aspect. So the herb itself actually gives him heightened instincts, enhanced abilities. It makes him superhuman, but not everybody takes it. So other members of the royal family don't get to ingest that herb. So Shuri, for instance, in the trailer, is enhanced by her own technology. She's a really awesome Tony Stark type character that innovates with their vibranium technology, finds new uses for it. The lineage of the panther is a little more straightforward. You take the mantle, you take the herb, you form a bond with this otherworldly spiritual panther god. I'll be really interested to see how they deal with that because they do get into the afterlife, the Dajala, the spiritual plane, but also they literally just eat a plant that's been growing in vibranium tainted soil for thousands of years. The important thing that they don't really tell you though is that the heart shaped herb only grows from the heart tree which is in the necropolis here. So if you look in the brand new comic, the way they put it down here explains a little bit better. It's a very sacred place that only Black Panther and other really high ranking people can go. So not just anybody could walk in there and ingest the herb and get those powers. So what you have is you have like a Captain America level person wearing a lot of vibranium tech that's gone way beyond what Stark has done and you get your badass Black Panther. So that's why he can move so much quicker, but the suits that he wears are just as good as anything that Stark would wear, and it's form-fitting and lightweight. Don't even get started on this cityscape here. If you think the ships that you see in Guardians of the Galaxy are advanced, they're not quite as advanced as, say, like the Nova Corps or the Kree. They're not quite there yet. But that whole pitch, the idea of El Dorado, this mythical city that's so much better than everywhere else. So I know a lot of you are like, hey, wait a minute, how come they haven't addressed this in the Thor movies? Probably because he doesn't care that much about humans unless something is really wrong. They're concerned with much bigger galactic things, and Uru metal is just as good as vibranium. So it's like when you see Black Panther scratch Captain America's vibranium shield with his vibranium claws. He wouldn't be able to scratch Thor's hammer because the hammer is enchanted, but if he went up against a normal Asgardian soldier, yeah, he'd be able to claw the hell out of their metal armor. Moving into the technological side of things, this is where it gets even more interesting because you look at him and it looks like a normal cloth suit like you see in the comics, but we know because of Spider-Man Homecoming is that just because the mask, for instance, looks like it's cloth doesn't mean that you don't have a digital readout inside there. So we haven't been inside Black Panther's mask yet, and I think that's mostly just so they don't give away too many things before the movie. But as you've seen in the comics, part of his suit is actually extremis style building itself around him. So part of it's practical, like he climbs into a pair of trunks, but the rest of it just comes out from that small piece. The same way that Iron Man's glove manifests from that little wristwatch looking device. I don't think they're going to do anything that crazy in the movie. I think it's going to be closer to what you see in Spider-Man Homecoming. Like he actually climbs into a suit that just has a lot of technology built into it. 
Some of you may have noticed in these UN scenes that he's wearing the Kamoyo beads. What those are sort of like a ceremonial, highly advanced eye device that allows them to access Wakanda's database, but they only work inside Wakanda. They require vibranium. So there's vibranium in the soil. What happens is, is when they're in proximity, the Kamoyo beads activate, they feed off that energy. So when they leave Wakanda, it'd be like taking the battery out of your iPhone. They just look like normal beads when he's walking around in the world. But when he's inside Wakanda, there's a holographic display that'll project. It gives him access to everything. It's sort of like his version of Friday. So Stark has holograms that'll project from his gear where he can talk to it. He can see things. He can interact with the holograms. Black Panther has that too, but it has a much more ceremonial look to it. So that's what these are. But the really cool thing, I think, is that the fact that they're powered by vibranium. So whenever you're near vibranium, they just activate automatically. The weakness being that if you're not near vibranium, they're not going to work. So what you'll see is, is when they're in Wakanda fighting, you'll probably see him use the hollow display. But it goes beyond this, too. This is the tribal aspect to it. So you've seen a lot of tribal elements in the trailer. There's a lot of culture of Wakanda that's gone untouched. So you see the Asgardian culture has been preserved, even though they're highly advanced beings. They have the Rainbow Bridge. So a lot of their practices are very ancient, but they've grown super advanced. So it's the same thing with Wakandan society. What happens is, is Wakandan citizens grow older and they go through life changes, achievements. They go through manhood or womanhood ceremonies. They gain new beads that have different technological functions. So there's beads that store personal data. There are beads that do other things as you sort of unlock achievements. So like Black Panther would have special beads because he's the king of Wakanda that other normal citizens wouldn't have. So they're all very personalized to your own life's journey. So I think that's what makes Black Panther as a movie so much more interesting than just another Iron Man movie. You get all this really cool technology, but there's this cool cultural heritage aspect to the way they develop technology and use it that goes all the way back to his basic powers, the reason why he takes up the panther mantle, their connection with the panther god, their connection with the afterlife and the spirit realm. So I know a lot of you now are like, hey, wait a minute. If this technology is so advanced and so great, how come Tony Stark doesn't know about it? How come Everett Ross, who's working with the World Security Council, doesn't know about it? It's just because Wakanda has been so isolated and protected from the outside world for thousands of years. And I know a lot of you are asking about this map of India and the United Nations scene. It's glowing red like something really bad happened and Black Panther has to answer for it. They have highly advanced technology, probably pretty crazy weaponry. Somebody probably steals something and uses it to attack or do something really bad in India. So Black Panther has to answer for that. We're trying to be better members of the global community now, so he has to navigate those politics while at the same time learning to be a king, keeping these other big tribes of Wakanda from getting rid of him. And they did explain that this person in green here that people have been asking about, he's just the leader of the biggest tribe in Wakanda. So he's one person who could turn the populace against Black Panther if he wanted to. There's a whole bunch of Black Panther comic book stuff that we can talk about. We can talk about Infinity War stuff. He posted this picture with the Hulk. There is a badass Wakandan Hulk buster that he wears during the recent run. So leave all your requests for bonus videos. I'll probably do another video about Killmonger, the big villain. There's a big thing with the Warrior Falls sequence they tease in the trailer. It's a big part of the Black Panther comics. So I'll name the giveaway winner when I post my next Marvel video. While you wait for that, you can click here to rewatch the trailer and you can click here for brand new Spider-Man Homecoming. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I will see you guys tonight.